This is our sixth and final review video for our EOC this year. This video is going to cover question eight, which kind of flubbed the first time I did it and I did it in a separate video, but I want to discuss regression in more detail. And then in class, I will open it up for general Q&A on anything in the review packet that we've gone over, or any questions you have about your EOC in general before we head into that at the end of the week. So I wanted to begin this with a review of regression. Um, if you think regression, the word regress means to go backwards. It's the opposite of progress or pro means forward and then like re would be backwards. And so typically in math, you have an equation and then you would use the equation and you'd plot some points and you would generate the graph. Um, in a regression, you have the points and then you go backwards from the points to go get the equation. So it's just going in the other direction from the direction that we would typically teach it and we would typically go. So to cover this, um, you think of regression as a way of taking a set of points and finding the equation of the function that goes with them. So you would be provided with a set of points, a set of data points, and then you're looking for the function that is going to best describe those points. Now, in life outside of math class, this is probably the more common direction you would go, because if you are a scientist, you're an engineer, you're observing stuff, you're going to generate data points. And then you want the mathematical model that is going to allow you to work with those data points to predict things. So it's a very useful direction to be able to go. A regression curve comes as close as possible to as many points as possible, but does not have to go through any of the points. So you don't actually need to go through any of the points. That's not part of the definition of what a regression curve is. A regression curve comes as close as possible to as many of the points as possible, but it doesn't have to go through any of them. Okay. No, typically it will. Typically it's going to go through one or more of the points, but it doesn't have to. The idea is we want the curve to come as co close as possible to these points. So I toyed around with how I wanted to do this, um, and I ended up deciding to do one that would come out to be a perfect line. So I had like tinkered with these points and I had made them not perfect lines and then decided that I wanted to um, have them come out nice and clean for the purposes of doing the example. So in order to do a regression curve, we are going to uh, add the item up at the top here with the plus sign and we're going to add a table. And you can simply take your data points and put them into the table. And Desmos is awesome, whoops, three, and that's negative three. Um, and we'll plot them for you. And you can tell that this data is artificially generated. So this data is generated from a math teacher who wants the data to come out nice. In real life, when you're taking real um, values and you're measuring things, you're going to have a certain amount of error. And so the points would be sort of like a line, but maybe not perfectly like a line. Maybe they'll be a little off from each other, or maybe you're not even sure if it is linear. Maybe they are spread out so much that you're wondering, eh, like, is that a line? Now, the way the regression curve works, um, if you're doing a line, is you're going to use um, any one of the forms of an equation. Now, for lines, we keep this with y equals mx plus b, but when I show you in a little bit with quadratics, you can use any of the forms of a quadratic. The difference is, is that you're going to use a tilde instead of the equal sign, and on your keyboard, the tilde is right next to the number 1. Um, you'll hit shift and then hit that key. Um, and then you need to use X1 and Y1 in order to tell Desmos that you want it to reference the points in the table. Um, now, if you're looking at your table and your table has like X2, Y2, what that means is that it's the second table that you've done. Um, and so you just change your subscripts in your regression to a two instead of a one. So typically, if you were writing the equation for a line, you would you would use y equals mx plus b. And you'll notice that um, Desmos is not doing what I wanted to do. It's um, giving me the exclamation point there. And it's saying add slider because it's not recognizing what m and b are. So in order to do that regression, we need to make a couple adjustments. First, our y and our x need to be 
um, y1 and x1, okay? Because we need to tell it to look at the table. And then instead of the equal sign, we use a tilde. And that's the syntax of Desmos. That's just knowing what Desmos expects you to do in terms of your equation. And now if I scroll down a little bit, um, I will see the the numerical values here. And, um, and Desmos is great. It like puts the model up there so you can kind of get a sense of how good is this model. And it is telling me that in this case, the slope is negative two and the y-intercept is three. So if you were to write that as an equation, it would be y equals negative two x plus three. And you can tell um, like the red just went over the, the black, but you would look at this and you would just say, okay, what are the parameters in this? And, and decimals will tell you what those number values are. Um, now the statistics piece here, like the R2 and the R um, or R squared and the R, those are basically telling you what, how good of a model this is. And we're not, we're not dealing with those. So you're going to scroll down to the parameters to see what your regression equation should be. Okay, so we have done that before in class, but it's been a little while, and um, I would encourage you, if you're watching this at home, to, to actually do this, type it in, reinforce it, get your fingers good at the keyboard, um, so that if you have a problem that's got a data table, that you can um, enter it in and, and enter it in efficiently. So how do we choose which type of function? So if the problem says, write a linear function to model this data, then you know you're going to pick y equals mx plus b because it's a line. But what if it doesn't say? And in a real life example, for those of you that are interested in science and engineering or finance, there's no like power that be that tells you this is a line or this is a parabola or this is exponential. So it is up to you to decide. This gives the uh, this is up to the person doing the regression. It involves knowing the different shapes of the graphs and their parent functions. So you need to know when you're looking at the dots on the coordinate plane, what does this look like? Does it look like a line? Does it look like a parabola? Does it look like a, we haven't done a sine function, but does it look like a sine function or does it look like an exponential? What does it look like? And then you have to make that judgment call. I am going to do a regression with. Many times it may not be obvious if those points are kind of scattered up, apart, or maybe if they're not, it, it might still just not be obvious. Sometimes you can see that there is a curve, but you can't tell what kind of a curve it is. So many times it may not be obvious which kind of function works best. For example, what would happen if we did a quadratic regression on the previous data? So looking at the previous data, I got to remember what it was. It was zero. Well, it was three, negative three. I think it was zero, three. Was it zero, three? That seem right? One. That doesn't feel right. I think it was zero, one. One. No, I think it was zero, three. You guys are probably like, Ms. Taylor, just rewind the video. Can cannot do. Um, two. Sure. Okay. So suppose I put in here a quadratic regression instead. So this is going to give me a parabola. So our quadratic um, in standard form would be this. So ax squared plus bx plus c, but again, it's not in the right syntax and it, Desmos doesn't know what I want to do with that. So I have to make sure that I change my y to a y1 to tell it to go look at those tables, okay, the table there, and I've got to change all of that. And then I need to change my equal sign over to the tilde. And um, it's a little bit hard to see, but that looks really good. Um, yeah, like that ends up looking like really, really good. Uh, now that one is actually still showing a line, but I swear it didn't earlier. Like earlier it gave me a, um, 
I swear it gave me a parabola earlier. Um, but it gave me like something that like came and curved around like that. But okay, so of course it's not gonna do that in the video. Um, of course not. But uh anyway, well, there we go. Um earlier it did. You can just you're just gonna have to decide whether you believe me or not. <laughs> that you can pick what kind of regression that you want to do. Okay, so this is a list of parent functions. So these are the things that you have to pick from um, when you are, are choosing one. Now, for your EOC purposes, I would be surprised if it was anything other than a line or a quadratic, um, but we're going to look at exponentials in this particular lesson. So if you want to do a linear regression, you would do y equals mx plus b. For a quadratic, you actually have three options. You've got the standard form of the quadratic, which is the y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, um, but you might want the vertex form um, so that would be the x minus h plus k. That's the one that tells you if it moves left or right or up or down. Um, and then you have the A out in front. Or you might potentially want it in factored form, which would be like x minus p, x minus q. And the A value would be the same for all of them. Um, if you wanted to do absolute value, you would do y equals A and then absolute value minus, k, uh, minus h plus k. If you wanted to do square root, a and then the square root of x minus h plus k. Now you might notice that there is there's a pattern here. Um, you've got your your vertex form of the quadratic, and then you have the absolute value, and then you have the square root. Okay, like kind of seeing that. Now a polynomial, you would add a new term in front of the quadratic. So if you wanted to do say a cubic, you would do something like this. You would do a x to the third plus b x squared plus c x plus d, and um, and if you wanted it to be like a fifth, you would just like put a or a fourth. You would put like another term out in front, and then exponential is a times b to the x. So you've got like some kind of number, and then times like a number raised to the x power. Now you can actually do more with this as well. You can shift it left and right and up and down. Like there's other stuff you can do with it. But for the purposes of trying to review this and try to get the best quality of content covered in the most efficient amount of time, we don't want to muddy it too much. So you might want to take a moment and write those down just to try to memorize them a little better. You cannot walk into your EOC with the list of these functions. You do need to know them but writing them down will help you know them. So pause the video here if you need to, to write those down. So this brings us back to problem eight. And um, I do have a video where this is the only problem that I did um, because it is really messy and I'm not totally sure how well this is going to work, but the table below shows the population of a city during certain years since 1992 using an exponential model. So they are telling you this is an exponential model. The other way you might know is if you think about your at-home test, one of the things I asked you on that was to come up with an example of exponential growth. And a lot of you said population is an example. So that would come from your background knowledge from paying attention to the word problems, doing, doing what you need to do. Estimate the population of the city in 2016. So we can go ahead and um, put the table in, but it's going to be cranky at us. So what I did, and, and I'm debating whether I want to um, to go through this in this video or not it because i just don't know what the chances are that people watching this video also watch that video i just have no idea um 98 Two three nine nine five and two thousand seven three zero oh, two one two three. Okay, and um, obviously we can't see any of these. So if you're plotting some points and you can't see them, we have our lovely zoom fit right here, and it'll allow us to see them. So if I want to do an exponential regression, um, if you remember the exponential was this, it was. 
a times b to the x but of course Desmos is yelling at me and saying it doesn't know what it wants me to do so I'm going to make that an x1 I'm going to come over here and make this a y1 and my equal becomes a tilde so here's the issue with this this number right here this a value is ridiculously small now this is a great um yeah like it's a, a great model it it's going through the data really well um but it is it is um the numbers <laughs> like that number is really 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 small this would be um 2.47 um 95 times 10 to the negative 62 it means you take the decimal point and you move it 62 places to the left um, so it would be point, like zero point, and then it'll be 61 zeros before you get to the A. It's a really, really small, um, yeah, really, really small number. Uh, so one twick, twick, one twick you can do uh, is to adjust the years on this that can sometimes bring it so that I don't know, you can see stuff better and so the the trick on this is you take 1992 and you make that year zero which means that 1995 is year three 1998 is year six 19 well whatever that it was 2000 yeah we're going we're going up by increments of three uh this is 12 and then this would be year 15 and now of course i've moved all my points off so we'll zoom fit it again and you don't have to retype the regression but you will notice that as i've been doing that desmos has been updating the regression and so we actually have um like better numbers to work with we don't have um times 10 to the negative 62. so i still am not a big fan of these numbers but like i like them better so what we're looking for is the value in 2016. so what i'm gonna do is type in this as a function so f of x is equal to a which is nine five two four six point four times b which is one point zero eight zero zero one to the x and you'll notice that that goes tracks right up on top of the other graph now the reason i redid that was because i want to be able to plug in the value for 2016 which i did not figure out before i started this video so uh we got to figure that out so 2007 was year 15 so 2008 is 16 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 uh 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24. okay so i'm doing a little bit of scratch work there so what I want to know is what is f of 24 and that gives me um 604,108 point blah 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 because you don't have fractions of people now it's not exactly what any of my answer choices are but it's close enough that I feel good about the answer that I'm going to pick and I am picking answer choice b okay um now you might think well why is it off why are we not getting something exact well because these numbers here are rounded okay so whatever this regression is these numbers are being rounded off they were bigger numbers and so we did not get those in there exactly as is so that's going to cause a round off error in our final answer and and this is acceptable when you think about how big these numbers are so when you're dealing with hundreds of thousands being off by what is it it's 603,900 something versus 604,100 we're off in the ballpark of like 150 okay when you're dealing with hundreds of thousands we are off by like 
150. So I hope I did that right. So, so that is acceptable. That is acceptable. We feel really good about answer choice B. So I did want to go through that problem. Um, that is one that I would not necessarily expect you guys to do like on your own without some assistance. But um, I know you guys can put the table in, but we needed to talk about the regression, uh, what the exponential regression looks like, and then the little tweak if you are given something with dates that you can go back and readjust and just call the first year, like year zero. Um, so that's a pretty common thing that's done. So there we go. That was our review of problem eight. And then this is where in class, uh, I'm just going to open it up to what other problems do you want to go over? So if you have some holes or gaps in your packet, maybe you were absent a particular day and the video didn't make sense to you or whatever it is that you would like to go over, that's going to be the remainder of class. We will go over problems and the different ways that we can solve them. And so if you are doing this from home and you do have problems that you'd like to go over and you're not sure where to find those answers, please reach out to me and let me know. Um, for the year I'm recording this, your finals are May 4th and May 5th, which is Thursday and Friday of this week. Okay. So other than that, you guys know where to find me and I will uh, see everybody soon for their EOC.